Hey, this is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Today, for our Guitar 101, we are taking it back to the very beginning to talk about the anatomy of an electric guitar. If you've been playing for a while, you probably don't need to watch this. You might know what all of this stuff is. However, you might not know all of the parts that make up the guitar you've been playing. You never know. If you're new to the guitar, it's very important that you understand the aspects of the guitar so that as you're shopping, you understand the features, the different measurements and whatnot that are being talked about in reference to the guitar you are interested in purchasing. So without any further ado, let's get to the anatomy of an electric guitar. For our guitar today, we're going to be looking at a new 2018 Fender Elite Stratocaster in this beautiful Mystic Sky Blue. The guitar is primarily made up, first of all, of the body. Now that should kind of go without saying, but there's a lot of different body styles out there. This is a Stratocaster body. It's also a double cutaway body, but you can look at a single cutaway, Les Paul style guitars, arch tops, semi hollows and everything. But when you see body, it's referencing this primary part of the guitar. The next primary part of the guitar is the neck. And necks can come in a variety of shapes and sizes uh, in, a different, in addition to different materials. So this is a hard rock maple neck, which you'll find on most Fender guitars. It's very stable wood. On a lot of other guitars, you might find necks made out of mahogany or rosewood, and it affects the feel as well as the tonal characteristic of the guitar. The top of the neck has probably the most important part of the guitar or make up of the most important parts of the guitar as it deals with you, the player, interfacing with the guitar itself. And that is the fretboard. Now the fretboard is made up of the neck and frets, but it's not always just the neck. Sometimes a material is laminated onto the neck to change the look, the feel, the texture and tonality of the guitar. So in this particular case, we have a maple neck, but the fretboard is made of East Indian rosewood. And the frets are then put into that rosewood that's laminated onto the, fret, onto the neck itself. Uh, the frets can uh, be different materials, different sizes, um, and also have a different radius. And these are all things that you want to pay attention to that in later Guitar 101 videos we'll delve more in depth on. Um, the height and the radius or curvature of the frets, um, in addition to the scale length and spacing of them, all matter as far as how it feels to your hand and how the guitar ultimately sounds. Up at the very top of the neck, this part here, is the headstock. Now a Stratocaster headstock is very unique. It's been like that since the 50s and it's its own design. But every headstock on an electric guitar follows typically one of two patterns. It either has all the tuners six on a side or three on three with a few oddballs or differences from different builders there. But mostly what you'll see is all the tuners will be either on this side or on the other side in six in line um, configuration. So in this particular case, we have six locking tuners. You can see on the back here that they lock, uh, which is a nice feature to have. So six locking tuners on one side on a, say, Gibson-style electric guitar, we would typically have a mahogany neck with three tuners on either side, similar to what you would see on an acoustic guitar. Now, something else that you'll notice about this headstock is this little guy right here. This is called a string tree, and this is pretty common to see on a guitar that has um, a straight headstock with tuners, six tuners on one side. It doesn't have a back angle. So this string tree, or sometimes multiple string trees, help to pull the strings down and give them a better angle over the next part we're gonna talk about, and that's the nut of the guitar. So every acoustic, electric, classical guitar, every guitar that's in existence, regardless of the type, has a nut, and the nut is right here at the top of the neck between the fretboard and the headstock. The nut acts as kind of a pass-through for the strings. And it's a very important aspect of the guitar because what it does is it determines a few things. It determines the width of the neck, the string spacing, and um, the overall height of the strings at the initial part of the, the neck. So if a nut is too high, 
your action or the height of the strings above the fretboard will be too high. If it's too low, the strings will buzz and you won't get a clear sound out of it. Also, if this nut isn't cut correctly, you can get binding and you'll hear it when you're tuning a guitar, you'll hear a little ping, a little ping, ping. What that is, is that's the, the wrap on the string getting caught in the nut as it's passing through and you're tuning it. Okay, and that's something you don't want to hear. So pay very close attention to the nut on the guitar. It can be made of different materials. On this guitar, it's made of bone, and that's typical on a lot of high-end guitars, or they're made of a synthetic bone. Plastic is sometimes used, and that doesn't wear as well as bone does. Uh, graphite and, and brass and a lot of other materials are also used with differing uh, wear features as well as tone. Moving back over to the body, of course, you're going to have to put this on with a strap. So at either end of the body, we have strap buttons. Now these happen to be strap lock strap buttons. Okay, so it comes with special hardware on this guitar where you can mount the strap to the guitar and it locks in place. That way, if you decide to swing the guitar around your neck, you're not gonna end up on YouTube like a lot of other people have with the guitar flying off 20 feet. I don't recommend that anyway, but it does make sure that it's secured to your strap and not going to go anywhere. Um, so you always want to make sure that you pay close attention to the type of strap buttons that are on a guitar. It varies from model um, and manufacturer. The body itself can be made in different shapes and also of different materials, and each one of those has a benefit to it. Electric guitars are usually made of ash or alder or mahogany or a combination of mahogany and maple and some other exotic tone woods that are out there, and also basswood, which has been a more modern used lightweight wood on a lot of guitars like from Ibanez. Uh, this guitar happens to be made of alder, a really wonderful tone wood that Fender's been using for a number of years. But like I said, you can take that, and since it's not an acoustic guitar, you can really cut it into whatever type of shape that you want and ensure that it is both uh, striking in appearance and it's got the right aesthetic for you, and it's also comfortable. So you can see on the body of this Stratocaster, they have carved some space away here for your rib cage or your belly, and they've carved this area for your arm to make it very ergonomic and comfortable. And then they've got both cutaways here to give you lots of access up the neck. Um, so when you are shopping for an electric guitar and you notice the different shapes, there's a reason for those shapes. So pay close attention to the type of comfort it gives you, the type of access it gives you, and what you aesthetically prefer over one or the other. And also when you play them, they're gonna have different tones. And a lot of times that's from the wood. So keep that in mind. A lot of times it's also from these guys. This is called a pickup. Now the pickup is basically the microphone of an electric guitar. And it functions a lot like a microphone functions. It is an electromagnet that is picking up the vibrations of the strings as it passes over pole pieces on the pickup system. It then goes through controls here. In this case, it's a volume and two-tone controls and a five-way switch to allow you to switch between the pickups and then out to your amplifier. By picking a different pickup system through a selector, uh, you can get a different sound out of the guitar. And let's talk about that because we've done in-depth discussions on types of pickups, but understanding how a pickup works will help you to understand why there's different configurations. So these are single coil pickups. On a lot of other guitars, they might have what's called a humbucker pickup. Those are the two primary types. There's also uh, jazz master pickups and P90s and all of these other things that are variations on one of those two pickups. A single coil pickup has one coil, okay? A humbucker has two, so it'd be like two of these right next to each other. And the reason for that is most single coil pickups have a bit of a sound, a hum to them, okay? When you put another one next to this magnet with a reverse, right, if you remember from school, you have north poles and south poles, all that stuff, it gets rid of the hum. But it changes the tone, as, uh, tone of it as well. Now the placement of the pickups is really important. Even if all the three of the pickups are exactly the same, by putting them in a different spot, you're going to get a different sound. Take a guitar and strum it up here by the neck. And then on the same string, strum it down here by the bridge. And what you will hear is a trebly brighter sound than up here. 
That's because of the frequencies that you are getting from that portion of the vibration of the string. By having a pickup here, okay, it's picking up a warmer tone. If we had it, say, theoretically, say if we put a pickup up here in the middle of the neck, it'd be really, really, really warm, probably muddy so much that it's so warm. But right here, it's picking up that frequency. This middle pickup is picking up this frequency, and this bridge pickup is picking up these frequencies closer to here, okay? The closer to this piece of vibrating mass, the brighter it's going to be. Most every electric guitar out there has some type of selector to allow you to pick between the pickups and a combination of the pickups. Now this guitar has a five-way blade selector switch, meaning it's just in line and has five positions. Sometimes there's three. There's also toggle switches, and on some guitars, this is less common, you might have not a switch, but a, a, a knob that you rotate to blend between uh, different pickup sounds, and that's a pretty cool option. So when you're shopping for an electric guitar, pay close attention to the types of controls that it has, because you'll probably have a preference and have a comfort with one over another. From the selector switch, you have the controls for volume and tone. This has a master volume and two different tone controls that affect different pickups. Sometimes there's one volume and one tone. Sometimes there's two volumes and two tones, or two volumes, one tone, and a master volume. There's a lot of different options. So again, just be aware of what's happening on the guitar and how you can take control of the different tones that are available. Um, finally, all of that goes out through the uh, input jack. You plug a quarter inch cable uh, into this and out to your amp or pedals. Uh, this on a strat's right here on the top and really easy to access. Sometimes it's along the side um, or sometimes it's there's a channel on the on the side or back where it plugs in and keeps it out of the way. So there's a lot of different options out there but every guitar has a quarter inch cable connection. And then finally the strings are mounted from the tuners at the top of the neck down across the nut to a bridge. Now that bridge can be very different. On this guitar, it has a floating vibrato bridge. A lot of times it's called a tremolo, but actually it's vibrato. It changes the pitch of the strings, and it is uh, held in place, and then it has the tension of the strings counteracted by some springs. Now on a Stratocaster guitar, you can see on the back, there's a cover. If we remove this cover, you can see springs that are holding the block of that bridge in place, and basically balancing out the tension between the springs and the strings and it's fully adjustable, so you can change that to how you want it. Some electric guitars, actually probably majority electric guitars out there, do not have this type of a system. The strings are in place, and they're going over some type of bridge, whether they're going through the body or they have a tailpiece. In either case, they're not, they're, there's no spring action, there's no vibrato in place, and there's pluses and minuses benefits of either system, and you probably will have a preference over one or the other, so check that out. The last thing I want to mention doesn't have to do with a part of the guitar per se, but actually an aspect of the construction. And that is the neck joint, or how the neck mounts to the guitar body. On a Stratocaster, Telecaster, and a lot of other guitars out there, the neck is simply bolted on to the body. Now, the way it's bolted on can be a little bit different, but in either case, there are bolts going through the body into the neck, holding it in place through some type of a plate or reinforcement. Other guitar bodies might have the neck glued in to a joint uh, where it can't be removed. It is set from the factory, and that's how it is. Um, and then finally, a less common option is a neck through, where the body is basically made of two parts that are glued to either side of a neck that runs the entirety of the guitar. And that has some interesting uh, benefits to it as well, but it's less common to see. So that, in a nutshell, is the anatomy of an electric guitar. There are a lot of options out there, but they all follow some type of formula along this line. And so if you are informed about what makes up a guitar, when you're shopping for it and you read all of these features and aspects of it, this nut width, this type of pickup and stuff, you can be better informed about the type of guitar that will probably appeal to you and serve you well. So if you have any questions, I want you to go to our website, alamomusic.com, where we have articles, specs, photos, everything uh, that you need to learn about the guitars we have available. And of course, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We're here to help you out. Hey, thanks so much for watching the videos we put out on YouTube. We make these with the goal of helping you find the right instrument to suit your needs, to find the perfect fit so that you find the right guitar and bring many years of joy. We believe strongly that if you play a note, it can change your life. 
But if you're shopping for a guitar right now, you may be overwhelmed by the amount of choices that are available. Should you get an acoustic guitar, an electric guitar, a classical guitar? Which features matter, price points, things like that. It can be overwhelming. And for that reason, I've written a guitar buyer's guide called Don't Get a Good Deal on the Wrong Guitar. Follow the link below to download this very comprehensive guide that will talk about every aspect that you should be paying attention to when it comes to purchasing a new guitar. If you ever have questions or need help, go to our website, alamomusic.com. We're here to help. Thanks.